Mira, and today I am going to walk you through everything that I did to be able to make this butterfly rag quilt. All right, so the first thing that I want to mention is I will be showing you everything that I did using some photos and some video. I didn't record the whole thing, I apologize. I will have the pattern that I used for this butterfly rag quilt linked in the description down below, as well as any of the sewing tools that I used. My favorite clippers are linked down there. They are awesome if you make rag quilts. And now I want to move into how I chose my fabric because doing these animal rag quilts can actually be frustrating right off the bat if you don't have a plan before you go to your fabric store. So the first thing that I did was I had a look at my pattern. This is my pattern here, it's by Simplicity. And I had a look, you can see on here that we have a bit of a sample. Actually, you can see on this bottom one here, I can tell what colors they used in what sections. So what I did was I made a copy of the pattern itself. This is my copy. And I marked what numbers were as far as the fabric pieces. So I ended up with a little list here with all of the different fabric pieces that you can order. So on the back of your pattern here, you will have all of the fabric pieces that you need to buy to make your rag quilt. So I used all of these fabric numbers, I listed them, and then I figured out by looking into the pattern what fabric number went where for each piece. That way, when I actually looked at their sample, I was able to write, oh, they did a particular one in um, this yellow color, or they did the light purple, or the blue. And what helped me with that is when you're looking at this, you just assume that the fabrics that they're telling you to cut out are actually the fabrics that they used, and it's not the case. Sometimes these samples on these rag quilt patterns, they will tell you to cut two different fabrics, but on their sample they actually cut both sets of pieces out of the same fabric. So I like to know what they've done on the sample in comparison to the actual pattern because that helps me choose my actual fabric pieces. So I hope that that's a quick introduction to how you can pick out your fabric to make the process a little bit easier for you. Once, of course, I've figured out what pieces belong with each, I take, well, I'll take my pattern to the store as well, but I find that this little piece of paper here is what really helps me figure out where my pieces are gonna go so that I buy the right amount of fabric for the right sections of my rag quilt. All right, so now that we've bought our fabric, what I like to do is just number each fabric to match the size of the fabric that I cut it at. That way, later, when I'm starting to look at what pieces I have to lay on what fabric, I'll just be able to follow the fabric numbers. This is my number five fabric, the pink fabric, and I needed four pieces cut out of each of these pattern pieces. So I just folded my fabric into four, that way I would actually be able to just cut out the pattern piece once and end up with those four pieces. If you're going to do that, just make sure that you're ending up with the mirrored image pieces that you need to put this entire blanket together. I must admit, I do not follow the lines that show you how to lay your pattern pieces on your fabric following the grain. I don't find that it matters when I'm working with this flannel fabric for the rag quilts themselves. Another thing that I would like to point out is how I actually cut out my pattern pieces. So as you can see, I have not cut out the corners to these particular pieces. All of my pieces, I leave extra space in those corners instead of following what the pattern wants of me. I find it helps me not end up with holes in my rag quilt at the very end, but that is just my personal preference. You can cut the pattern pieces out exactly how they ask you to. This is just one of those things that I learned after making a bunch of my rag quilts that I ended up with some holes because I kept those corners out. So now I just do it without the corners and I like that better.
Once I've cut out all of my fabric pieces, now it's time to cut out the batting. For this particular rag quilt that I did, I chose to cut out the batting the exact same size as the actual pattern pieces. In previous videos, I've cut the batting down to the center size. I wanted to see how this would work this time around, so I will tell you at the end of the video if I liked this method or not. And then I had all of my batting cut out and sandwiched between all of my fabric. So now it was time to take it to the sewing machine and actually sew it all together. So I would just lay the pattern piece on top and I would mark with pins where they wanted those extra seams to go to place everything together. I would do a back stitch and I would sew across from a pin to pin. Some people can draw these lines on their fabric. I find just marking with the pin is perfectly fine. The only piece of fabric that I did not sandwich together and sew those seams on right away was the largest bottom section of the wing. I did not want to sandwich those together until that center circle was sewn on and I'll let you know why later. Once all of the fabric has been sandwiched together with the batting, now it's time to add those little circles. I like to add them on ahead of time instead of trying to add them on later. It just makes things so much easier. But the way that I do this is I lay the pattern piece back on top of the fabric and then I can move those little circles around to make sure that they match up where they're supposed to under the pattern piece. And then I take it to the sewing machine and I sew all the way around those edges. One thing to remember when you're doing this is to make sure that you are adding your dots on the correct side of your pieces because you will need mirror images of these pieces. So make sure those dots are on the correct sides. I had to seam rip a few of mine out. Now I do end up doing a few things out of order. This is one of them. So once my circle is sewn on, I will actually snip all the way around it right away. That way it just saves me some time as once all of those circles are all sewn on and the entire rag quilt is sewn together, that's a really awkward time to have to snip around all of those circles. It's just easier to do now while all of the pieces are still apart. All right, so the last circle that needs to be attached is actually this large one on the bottom of the butterfly wing. And as I said before, I did not sew any seams on this large section yet. Well, actually that's not true. I sewed one seam all the way across from the top to the bottom before I added this, um, this circle on top but I didn't want to add all of those extra seams that come from the center of the circle. You can see I've got those gray seams already on that center circle. So I wanted to carry those seams onwards. So I wanted them to match, which is why I just sewed one seam across the entire base, sandwiching the large fabric together, holding that uh, batting in place before I added this circle. Then I added the circle, as you can see here. And then from there, I laid my pattern piece back on top and I started to mark where my lines would go. And then I would start each seam from the center line because some of my seams did not match the actual seams that were drawn on the pattern piece itself. So I used it as more of a guide. That way all of my seams would line up starting from the center seam moving outwards to where they wanted that line to end. I hope that makes sense. And then here you're actually seeing me mark that center seam that goes all the way around the center oval. And because my lines didn't match up perfectly, I just used it as a guide to where I needed my pins to be for that final seam. So right here you can kind of get an idea of how those two seams line up without me actually sewing those seams ahead of time. So then I just moved on down the line to where I had marked my pin. So both of my large butterfly sections, the lines probably don't match up perfectly from left to right but at least the lines match up from the center circle on outwards and I felt like that was more important. And this is what that large section will end up looking like. I think that it worked out quite well. Now that all of the circles have actually been sewn onto their individual pieces and I've snipped around all of those circles, now it's actually time to attach all of these pieces together. 
So these curves on these three pieces that go on the top part of the butterfly wing, what I did was I pre-snipped around those edges. That way it makes it a lot easier to sew those lines together because it gives it that flexibility that is needed. So here you can see that one seam is done and now I'm just going to snip along that edge and do the same for the next seam. And I'll do this all the way on through, getting all of those butterfly pieces on the top sections and on the bottom sections sewn together. So this is what that top section looks like all sewn together and then I move on into the middle section. I know I've been saying top and bottom sections but I've just been talking about the top part to the butterfly. That bottom section is actually that very large piece that we already sewed. So this is that middle section I was talking about and I will attach it using the same method clipping along those edges so that it makes it easier to sew those corners together or I should say curves together. And this one's a little odd because of course that purple piece is a bit smaller than the rest. So just make sure that you're attaching it where you're supposed to on your butterfly wing and of course make sure that your mirrored images are being sewn to the correct pieces. Once we've sewn that top section and middle section together, now it's time to attach the two. The way that I did that was I opened up one seam and I lined it up with the second seam and I pinned it together. That way I was able to sew a straight edge all the way along these two sections. And this is what that top part of the butterfly wing looks like all sewn together. Next, I moved on to attaching the bottom portion of those wings to the bottom center section of the butterfly, and this is what that looks like. Then, of course, it was time to attach the head to the middle portion of the butterfly's body, and then attach that to the two upper portion of the wings. And I do want to point out that in this photo, you can see that I actually pre-sewed around the head just because I thought it would be easier for me than having to do that seam later on, but I regretted doing that. So don't do that. I find it's easier to leave all of your outer edge final seams and just do that all in one go around the entire butterfly. Attaching the top portion of the wings to the top portion of the butterfly was probably the hardest part for me and I did end up making a bit of a mistake and sewing a little bit too much fabric together as you can see in this photo here, but I ignored it. I did not stitch rip it because it wasn't that big of a deal. You couldn't see it on the back as a huge problem and on the front, once you rag up your quilt, you won't notice little details like this. So I decided to leave that in. And somehow I missed documenting this, but I did sew the top section and the bottom section together. And once I sewed that together, then it was time to take it to the sewing machine and sew that one inch seam around the entire butterfly. And of course, every seam that I sewed over, I made sure to open them up so that they were pressed open as I sewed over them so that there wasn't as much bulk while I was sewing. And then once the entire butterfly has been sewn together and those outer edges have been sewn, it's time to start snipping. So what I did first was I snipped all of the sewn edges that are sewn down. I snipped them so that they were loose. And then I went through and I cut out all of the excess batting. Now I've never had to do this before because I normally cut that excess batting away ahead of time. And I have to say that I'm torn on whether I would do this method again or not. I found it handy in the beginning because I didn't have to add a few extra seams to make sure the batting didn't roll up uh, in the wash because it was not sewn down by all of those connecting seams. However, it was incredibly tedious having to cut out all of this excess batting afterwards. So no matter what, it's going to be work. Do you want the work to be at the front end of sewing this rag quilt together or do you want the work to be at the back end? The part that I didn't like at the back end was some of my batting, it was hard to cut away. And up against the dark purple, you could see some little white lines um, after the ragging process was done. It's really hard to notice unless you 
are really paying attention, so probably just me. But it does bug me that I can kind of see the batting in a few little areas up against the darkest purple, but everywhere else it did blend in. And of course, having it all cut away and having it all ragged up gives it a great look and hides a lot of those imperfections. Once I cut away all of that excess batting, then I started snipping and snipping and snipping with my little Fiskars snippers. They are my favorite. I will have them linked in the description down below. And that part, I just watched some TV and snipped away. I snipped every, uh, I'd say about a quarter of an inch along the line. And, um, and then of course I went through the whole washing the rag quilt part as well. I have a video actually walking you through the entire process of how to wash a rag quilt properly. That way you don't wreck your washer and dryer in the process. So I highly recommend checking that out. I will leave a link in the description down below so you can check that video out. And that my friends is everything that you need to know to be able to make your very own butterfly rag quilt. I have other rag quilt tutorials. So definitely check out that playlist. And if you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit that notification bell for future tutorials. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. See you next time.